Welcome. We hope you all had a, not a great celebration of Jesus' birth. And uh, Pastor Allison is uh, visiting her family and celebrating in Texas. So we're standing in for her, Ron and Linda Vaughn. Now, for Christmas jokes. Oh. <laughs> Why do people oh. fight the day after Christmas? Why? Because it's Boxing Day. Oh, that's English. <laughs> why was Santa sick on the day after Christmas? Well, why? All that work? <laughs> well, a couple of the chimneys who went down had the flu. Ooh, that's a groaner. <laughs> How do the elves clean Santa's sleigh after Christmas? Okay, you got me there. They use sanitizers. Oh, sanitizers. Ugh, that's another. Ugh. So going <laughs> that's from another that to a more serious thing, our pastoral prayer, that Linda will do. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we know that you know all, all these people here, and they all have concerns. And they all have special prayers. And we pray that you lift them up and answer their prayers. We pray for Pastor Allison on her trip, and may she return safely. May everyone in this traveling time and busy time return home safely. And back into your arms, Lord, we know that you are there. We pray that you bless this church and all that attend. Help them to know you, God. Thank you for your son, Jesus and this time is such a gift. That is our gift from you. Such a special time. We just praise you and thank you, Lord, and watch over us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. And then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Yes. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this, this day our daily, daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let it rise.
This message was written in case Pastor Allison had an emergency. So it's not crafted for the day after Christmas. But it's um, based, and it's based on uh, two devotions by Pastor Rick Warren. And I've elaborated on them. And we hope it will give you inspiration for 2022. And the topic is, Every Christian is a Minister. First, <clears throat> the Old Testament priests did three things. They could talk to God, worship God, fellowship with God. Everyone else had to go through them. Second, the Old Testament priests. The priests had the privilege and the responsibility of representing God to the people. Third, ministering to the needs of the people by serving them. That's the priests from the Old Testament. 1 Peter 2, 5 says, You come to him as living stones, a spiritual house that is being built into a holy priesthood. What he means is this, the spiritual benefits that priests have are now available to everyone. Thank you, God. So for believers, those things are true of you, too. God says you are a priest. Please take a moment to think about that. Is that, Is that scary, confusing, or exciting to you? Mm -mm. You have a direct access to God. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to go through someone else to pray, confess, or, or fellowship with God. You can read your Bible, talk to God, and fellowship with him. A veil was in the biblical temple. It separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple. Only the priests could go into the Holy of Holies, where God's Spirit was believed to be. Now look what happened on, uh, when Jesus died on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, God ripped that veil of separation between you and him. On the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. He gave us the gift of eternal life. And we receive that gift through faith. Thank you, God. On the cross, on the cross, Jesus said, I am thirsty. And then? A Roman soldier soaked a sponge in a jar of wine, vinegar, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. The scene is a remote hilltop. And where did this wine come from? Was a sour wine meant to torture Jesus further? Ooh, sour wine. Well, sour wine and bread were part of the basic daily rations of the Roman soldier. The sour wine was meant to relieve his thirst. This was something, this canteen was something that the soldier had drank. This is his ration. And perhaps the wine also eased his pain as well. Jesus' is pain. Think of that. A Roman who helped crucify Jesus then had compassion for him and shared his ration. Wouldn't you have liked to have been there to give Jesus aid? That moment at the cross is long past, and we can't help Jesus in that way. On the other hand, you can help those around you on behalf of Jesus. In Matthew 25, it says, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of 
these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. When you're serving others, you're serving him. So when you want to do something for Jesus, look for people around you who are in need. What about them? It's not always about us. As Pastor Allison recently said in a sermon, have open minds, open hearts, and open eyes to see ways to open doors for others. Proverbs 19, verse 17 says, Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. Acts 9, 36, in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, Dorcas in Greek. She was always doing good and helping the poor. We have a number of Tabithas right here in this church who help our community. Our members help with a clothes closet, uh, helping with food distributions, helping with meals for the needy, helping with neighborhood kids, helping raise money for the needy, like ringing the bell for the Salvation Army, yes. and many other things. Yeah, so, well, all a part of God's work and what yeah. he wants for us. Whenever you give food to someone who is hungry, you're giving it to Jesus. Mother Teresa said, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. I like that verse. Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. And John Wesley said, do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. In other words, you do what you can do. Yes. The same is true when you lead those who are spiritually thirsty or hungry to Jesus. People everywhere are spiritually thirsty, searching for purpose and, and significance. They hope from one they hop, excuse me, they hop from one thing to another, searching for what to do with their lives and if their lives have any meaning. People need to know that Jesus can quench their thirst that he is what they are looking for. They need to know that he meets them in their depression, discouragement, and despair. Love in action is when you meet the needs of other peoples and their thirst, physical or emotional or spiritual, out of love for Christ, who endured thirst on the cross for you. Out. This is done out of the love of Christ. You can serve God by serving people and helping others in his name. James 2, verse 26 says, For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without actions is dead. Ephesians 2.10, God is our maker, and in our union with Christ, he has created us for a life of good works. And, if, and one of our favorite verses in the Bible, Ephesians 3.20, God, God by, by the power, power at work, work within, within us, is, is able, able to, to do abundantly, abundantly far more than all we can ask or even imagine. imagine. Imagine that. Our closing prayer. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lead us to see others in need. Lead us to see others in need. Enable us to help them 
Enable us to help them. In more ways than we can think of. In more ways than we can think of. Or even imagine. Or even imagine. By your power within us. By your power within us. Amen. Amen. If you wish to send an offering to for the church, may the Lord bless you and keep you and shine upon you and bring you peace. Amen. Amen. Goodbye.